Welcome to the program. I'm Jared Reid. Turkey's air force has struck Kurdish militant targets in Iraq and Syria following an attack on a state-run defence company in Ankara on Wednesday. The attackers set off explosives and opened fire, killing at least five people. No group has yet claimed responsibility, though ministers are blaming the outlawed PKK, Kurdistan Workers' Party. The US and Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan have condemned it as a terrorist attack. This amateur video appears to show the moment of the blast at the gate of Turkish Aerospace Industries. The state-run company is located in Karaman Kazan, near Ankara. It employs over 10,000 people. Turkish media said the explosives were detonated by two assailants who then entered the complex carrying assault weapons, as seen in this security camera footage. Gunfire was heard shortly afterwards. Company employees said they spent several hours in shelters while police battled the intruders before being evacuated. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan received the news while attending the BRICS summit in Russia hosted by Vladimir Putin. We condemn this atrocious terrorist attack. I wish God's mercy to our martyrs. Turkey's interior minister said the attack bore the hallmarks of the banned Kurdistan Workers' Party and vowed revenge. We are determined to cut off the breath of those who ambush our national unity, solidarity and brotherhood, whether they are terrorist organisations, organised crime groups, all local thugs. Turkish Aerospace Industries produces combat aircraft and drones, which Turkey uses to battle Kurdish separatists and Islamist militants. Both groups have carried out terrorist attacks in the recent past. I'd like to welcome Sinan Chidi now. He's a senior fellow on Turkey at the Foundation for De Defense of Democracies in Washington, D.C. Welcome to DW. Now, this attack hit a state-run aerospace company, and I'm interested in the choice of this uh, as a target. How important, both strategically and symbolically, is this organisation for Turkey? Well, I think it's important from both angles that you've just mentioned, both strategically uh, as well as politically, simply because it is the premier and flagship organization, which is sort of the main backer of Turkey's essential sort of defense industry uh, innovations from, you know, the fifth generation fighter aircraft to all sorts of other uh, entities such as drones, as well as other sophisticated weaponry that Turkey is trying to pioneer. Um, and so the, symbol the symbolism cannot be lost on deaf ears because it is intended from what it looks like, depending on who claims uh, responsibility for this, to really sort of strike at the heart of Turkey's offensive capabilities, uh, as well as its sort of military uh, uh, industrial base, um, and really send a hard message saying that, uh, you know, Turkey's enemies are essentially interested in sort of uh, showing that, you know, they're willing to take it to the heart of their innovative hub. So in, intended to strike at the heart of Turkey's offensive capabilities, as you say. Officials are pointing fingers at the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party or PKK, though it must be said no group has yet claimed responsibility. Do you think that's credible? And, and if so, what could their motives be? So that's a good question. As you say, nobody has claimed responsibility. And I have to say at this point, there is so much information pollution out there, both mainly emanating out of Turkey. We have pro-government sort of apparatchiks or propagandists blaming this squarely on the shoulders of the United States and Israel. Then you've got government officials saying without evidence or any, you know, saying, suggesting that this is the PKK, which doesn't seem to make sense because over the last few days, the government seems to be engaging or meandering towards reopening peace talks and discussions, which could result in the release possibly uh, of the PKK leader who's been in prison since the late 1990s. So I'm not sure why the PKK would want to torpedo such an initiative. It, it could be a, a, a number of myriad of alternatives, such as uh, some of the splinter groups that are sort of on the fringes of the, the Kurdish separatist movement that have carried out similar attacks in past years. It could go even further than that. Look, Turkey has not made a lot of friends in the region. It has backed a lot of uh, militias inside of northeast Syria to combat the regime. 
which are disgruntled with the Erdogan regime because Erdogan's trying to essentially, you know, normalize ties with the Assad regime and they're not happy. Mm. Uh, we also know that there's a lot of remnants of ISIS fighters inside of Turkey uh, that, that have been essentially there for, 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 for the last decade or more. And because nobody has claimed responsibility for this, there's, there's a lot of specula speculation out there without any concrete sort of evidence. Yeah. And typically, I would say in past sort of where the PKK has bombed, they, then they don't delay claiming responsibility. OK, so you're saying it doesn't really make sense to point the finger at the PKK because of these peace talks and negotiations. How um, does this attack impact th these efforts that, that you've just been talking about? I mean, we'll have to see because right now what we've seen over the past week, things have moved very quickly in terms of government officials or partners of the Erdogan government uh, on the nationalist side really flipping the script, suggesting that, that Turkey may be poised to sort of restart these sort of uh, peace talks or what, what was previously called the Kurdish opening, um, which really sort of defied expectations uh, uh, given how Erdogan has been so essentially uh, bullish about combating sort of Kurdish uh, uh, political causes in the last few years. Um, so, you know, we'll see, we'll just have to see if, if there's going to be any impact on this right now, because Again, nobody's claiming responsibility for this. So it is very hard to make sense of who had, you know, who had motivation to do this, who would have been the losers out of a, you know, a peace resolution with the Kurdish political movement. There's just a lot of this information uh, and, and information pollution out there right now until somebody actually claims responsibility for this. Thank you very much for your insights there, Sinan. That's Sinan Chidi, Senior Fellow on Turkey at the Foundation for Defence of Democracies in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our correspondent Dorian Jones in Istanbul is following this story. Welcome back, Dorian. Um, what's being said about why Turkish Aerospace Industries was targeted? Well, Turkish Aerospace Industries, while it serves the civil sector, it is, it is vital to Turkey's defence industry, a growing industry in Turkey. It not only services Turkey's uh, main fighter jet forces, it also produces drones. Now, drones have become increasingly important in Turkey's war effort and also for exports, especially and in battling uh, groups like the Kurdish rebel group, the PKK. So it is seen as a, it's symbolically and also very important uh, 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 institution for Turkey and whoever the attackers are they would attacking such a vital institution will uh, cause major shockwaves across the country such a vital institution could be hit and it will raise questions about security because this institution is normally very very well protected and there will be questions raised how these attackers were able to uh, enter the uh, the institution which was so heavily protected and according to some reports they were targeting this at a time when there was a shift change where many people were going to work and leaving at the same time possibly targeting the personnel as well so this will also cause major concern so this is a prime target for uh, radical uh, groups whoever the, they are believed to be responsible and the finger of blame is being pointed at the Kurdistan Workers Party the PKK yeah, that's right. The Turkish Interior Minister Ali Yelikai has said uh, it is very likely that the PKK were responsible. He said the way this attack was carried out had all the hallmarks of the PKK. It does appear to have been a very well organised and coordinated uh, uh, attack. Very heavily armed, uh, the two perpetrators, not only carrying assault we weapons, but also carrying large amounts, of, reportedly, of explosives as well. Uh, they used a, a very powerful bomb uh, before uh, they assaulted to the main building. So it does appear that whoever ca they carried out, they were very well trained. So a lot of attention will be pointed at the PKK, especially given the fact that uh, this institution is producing drones. Now, drones have been at the forefront of Ankara's war against the PKK, particularly targeting Iraq, where its headquarters is, and also where its affiliates are operating in Syria. And they've had a, a profound effect on, uh, on the group as well. So it is seen as a possibly a big target for the PKK. Now, it has to be said there are also other radical left groups, the DHKPC, that also could possibly have carried out this attack. There's been no 
claim of responsibility so far. So it's still unclear who it is, but undoubtedly a lot of attention will be going on the PKK. Now, if it is the PKK, this will have potentially major political consequences because it comes at a time when President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has appeared to be taking tentative steps to end this conflict politically. Now, if, the, if it is confirmed the PKK were responsible for this, this will have major political consequences far beyond the attack on this institution. Uh, and I think there'll be a lot of attention now on whether the security forces can prove whether it's PKK. The Interior Minister says that they are trying to identify the perpetrators, and that will be a major step forward in identifying who is responsible for this attack. Okay, thank you for that, Dorian. Dorian Jones in Istanbul.